Now let's take a look at the latest portrait of Nigeria through the eyes of D.K. Chukumerije, one of this country's most prominent writers and performance poets. Over the years, he's become an established name on the national stage as he reflects on the issues and concerns of contemporary Nigeria. And now, having gone through a period of despondency following what he sees as a flawed presidential election, he's emerged from the chrysalis and is starting to take a hard look at this country under a new president, Bola Tinubu. So to what extent is life in Nigeria likely to be enhanced or fractured by this new fearsomely potent political reality? Is he gloomy, disheartened or hopeful? How is he likely to write this new Nigeria, which could either hearken to his message or potentially just move on without him? Of more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the lawyer, writer, and performance poet, D.K. Chukumarija. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Charles. A pleasure. The new president of Nigeria, Bola Tinubu, has been sworn in now. Uh, he's been in office for four days. I know it's early days yet, but how do you think he's presented himself so far? Well, um, it's really early days. It's very hard to tell. Um, obviously, we've had the, uh, the shock announcement of subsidy removal, and mm. um, uh, that, you know, costs a lot of corruption in society. Um, it does show that he can be decisive, which is always good in a leader. Um, but we, al we also hope that uh, it's important that government al always has a human face. Mm and takes all ramifications of, and consequences of policies into consideration. So we're also expecting to see that aspect of his leadership as mm. well. But it's early days. Yeah, that, that's yeah. a good point. But, but do you, at this stage, I mean, feel anxiety? Are you low in mood, hunched over, as you come <laughs> to terms with this <laughs> new reality? Or are you accepting of it and perhaps looking for nuggets of hope within it? Um, one has to always separate the politics from the governance. Mm. Whenever it comes to the governance, we're always hopeful uh, because when it comes to governance, it doesn't matter who you voted for. Mm. Uh, if the policies are bad, we all get to go down. If the policies are good, it doesn't matter who you voted for, we mm. all get to ride up. So once it comes to governance, one is always hopeful that whoever is in charge mm. will steer the shape of uh, state in the direction of peace, in the direction of progress for all. Uh, so I am hopeful, um, but politics can interfere with governance. Mm. Where you have a political culture that is deeply rooted in patronage, uh, scratch my back, I scratch your back, it will affect governance. Mm. The resources will not be directed and focused on governance. So in, in that regard, I'm worried uh, that looking at the political culture from which leaders have emerged, mm. uh, that might have a very negative impact on that the type of governance we want to yes. see. Yes, um, and, and <coughs> given that, um, after this 2023 presidential election, do you still see Nigeria as a democracy, or do you think the alleged manipulation so changed the environment for the elections um, that perhaps you're one of those now questioning whether Nigeria is a democracy or not and what democracy is or what it ought to be. In other words, is Nigeria a democracy because there were elections, however those elections were conducted, or is, there, or is that not enough for democracy even in the minimum understanding of what democracy is? These are the kind of questions you read in your exam <laughs> <laughs> in school and you're like, what, what is the lecturer trying to fill me or what? But um, Nigeria is an, an emergent, evolving democracy. Mm. Um, I, I think we are still a democracy. Uh, we're a flawed one, we're a defective one, but we are still a democracy. And it's important that we continue on that journey of evolution. Mm. Uh, it's not going to happen in one day, but we have to be steadfast and resilient in the pursuit of a better uh, democracy. So the elections were deeply flawed from where I sit, and um, it's important that they're also being challenged in a 
democratic way in court mm. and that, that process is also seen through. Uh, it's also important that we respect the institutions and laws and symbols and offices of our government as they are established. So these are all aspects of democracy mm. that even though I may not agree with how you got into power, as long as you're there, I need to respect that office. Right. And you also need to respect my right to, to challenge whatever mm. processes I feel were flawed. Yes. So in, in that, Nigeria is showing remarkable maturity as a democracy because you're seeing that happen. And I'm proud to see that as a Nigerian. Mm. So in, in that context, would you be inspired to look beyond your doubts um, if the new government perhaps chooses its team fairly and unnepotistically and perhaps starts to make overtures towards things like a national dialogue and restructuring and constitutional amendments that would rewrite the rules and make this country fairer. We always would like to see the leadership of this country do the right thing. Mm. And what you have mentioned are the right things to be done. We need uh, merit, the consideration of merit to be brought back into public sector appointments. We are a diverse society, so mm. we must always be representative. But merit must be given high priority in appointments to the public sector. This is very critical to managing diversity uh, in a country such as ours. Uh, it's very important that we have a stable macroeconomic environment where we, prices are not unstable and the major indices are properly managed. It's important that we're invested in human capacity development, the key. So all these things are things that you would want to see anybody in power focus on and do if you're mm. in power for one day one year four years but in your time in office you need to leave a positive legacy for nigerians and uh, for me taking into consideration the fact that i believe the elections were deeply flawed uh, the, the one way that you can ameliorate uh, feelings is to de deliver superlative performance uh, it's, it's not going to make a difference in terms of if the elections were in fact flawed and need to be redone or reallocated to somebody else, that will still happen. But that's a different process. In governance, you can always write your name in gold by leaving Nigerians of all tribes, all religions, all ethnicities, a better life. And mm. you write your name in their heart. And if that happens, what would you advise the opposition parties to do? Would, would you advise them to cooperate and take part in a project that would appear to be greater than them because it is in the national interest, beyond whatever they're doing in court? Everything must always be subject to the national interest. Whatever it will be for the greater good of the greater majority of Nigerians, we all need to support it and push that project ahead. Uh, anything that doesn't, it doesn't interfere with anybody's right to challenge mm. the 2023 elections in court, and they ought to. And that process will also deepen and strengthen our democracy, because democracy must be, must stand on laws and the rule of law. Mm. And there mm. must be a proper path to power, and we need to establish that for the future, so that in the future, we don't have elections where people are being burned to death and people are are being prevented from voting. These are not things that we would like to see repeat in the future. If we don't take decisive action now, then it will keep happening. And those things will eventually, if we let them loose and let them go untended, will bring our democracy down. So you need to manage, you know, Nigeria runs on two axes. That's why we have that motto, unity and faith, peace and progress. Mm. Unity and faith, speaking to the need to manage our diversity properly peace and progress speaking to the needs for socioeconomic development and governance. So you need to manage both processes. You can't have elections where people are being denied their fundamental right to vote on the basis of ethnicity because that is detrimental to peaceful coexistence. And if you don't manage diversity properly, properly it will sink the ship. Mm. You know? So you can't just give good governance and ignore diversity management. You have to do both. So it's important that those processes those rights are properly established mm. that all Nigerians, regardless of ethnicity, regardless of religion, wherever resident in this country, have the fundamental right to vote and that it must never be interfered with. Mm. That needs to be established. That's an important foundation for our nation going forward, as important as road, as bridge, as water, as education. 
those values, institutionalizing those values is equally important to our long-term survival as a nation. And in those circumstances, as a writer and performance poet such as you are, would you be swept up by the tantalizing possibility of it all? I mean, and in that case, how would you write about this new Nigeria? You know, I'm fascinated by your work, by your writing, by your performance. I mean, as you, you know, look at this new inspiring political landscape that you never thought would be pot possible, at least under possibly this dispensation. And you see sort of dissident voices being incorporated, criticism not being nullified. I'm, I'm really on, there are many things about the 2023 elections that I'm really happy about. Mm. Many developments in society. You know, the fact that you have a demographic that made its presence felt at the polls in 2023, uh, that's really exciting that you have uh, people whose voices have not really been brought to bear on the ballot box mm. you know, happening. You have a heightened consciousness and people are following the minute details of an election Absolutely. petition. That is amazing for our democracy and our democratic culture and we will reap the benefits in years to come. You know, so many wonderful things have come out of 2023 and I mm. see them and I'm keen to retain that, the energy that young people have shown in selecting or trying to select who they believe is the best leader to lead the nation. These are things that long term will help us build our country. Mm. So I am, it's always a mixed bag. There are things you look at and you say, oh, I wish that didn't happen. And there are things you look at and you're like, well, I'm really have, glad that that happened. Either way, it's a nation in evolution. And Nigeria is bigger than any single individual, any single party, any single ethnic group, any single mm. religion, any, any single region. And the nation is slowly marching forward. It's the seventh time we've peacefully transferred power. It's the fourth time we've peacefully transferred power between one individual and a completely different individual in our 63 years as an independent nation. That's a, an emergent culture we need to consolidate and build on. However, like I said, uh, governance, the path to power needs to be properly established. Mm. It needs to, we need to establish the fact that you can't simply do whatever you like to get political power in, in Nigeria. That's political amorality. If people can do whatever they like to get power and get away with it, it's going to affect the type of governance we get. Because the person who does whatever he likes or she likes to get power will feel that they own the state and the state belongs to them. And the state will not have that sense of uh, need to serve the people because I, I won it, I, I did. So we need to establish that you can't do that. that if you break certain rules or you, you stray out of a certain path, that, that path of power will be close to you. Mm. And that's why it's an emergent democracy because it's still a jungle out there when it comes to fighting for power. And we need to bring some order into that. And just listening to you there, I'm reminded of the British poet, I think it was Percy Shelley, who said that, um, the British writer actually, uh, philosopher, who said that poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. As a poet, a performance poet, what do you think your role should be now in Nigeria? Um, I'm a very passionate Nigerian and I take that very seriously. I believe that uh, politicians and lawmakers may give a nation its bone and its muscle, but that it's creatives and artists that give a nation its soul, that breathe into a nation the breath of life, that help a nation to know who the nation is, to articulate the identity. What does it mean to be a Nigerian? What is the Nigerian dream? What are our ideals as Nigerians? What binds us as Nigerians? What is our future? Why do we exist? Why must we exist in the community of nations? These are very important questions to answer in defining a nation. And politicians that are fixated on digging boreholes and, and building roads and winning the next election don't do this, you know, but it's not enough to build a road. You need to connect communities. And it is not roads that connect communities. It is narratives 
that connect communities. It is creating stories that an Alsa man, an Igbo man, a Yoruba man can identify with. Then you create a community. And that's the work of an artist. And that's something I take very, very seriously above everything else. Uh, it's very important to articulate what Nigeria is. Because if we articulate the values, the ideals that this nation represents, then we can hold our government accountable to those values. Because Nigeria is not the government. Patriotism is not loyalty to the government. It is loyalty to the country. And the country must represent something in the world of ideals. So for instance, chapter two of our constitution tells us that the ideals of Nigeria are freedom, equality, and justice. Did, did we see freedom, equality, and justice in the 2023 elections? So you hold your government accountable to its ideals. That's what it means to be a patriot, to be able to tell the government that you're not actually being Nigerian. Well, the mistake we make is that we identify Nigeria only with negative values. But Nigeria has positive values. Some of our national ethics, discipline, integrity, self-reliance, uh, religious tolerance, social justice. Are we seeing these ideals in practice? So it is my job as a Nigerian patriot to hold my government accountable and say the way that you're acting is not actually Nigeria. Your actions are destroying what this country actually represents. And it's a job I take very seriously to articulate Nigeria in terms of its ideals and its values. People always make the mistake of trying to define Nigeria by the actions of our founding fathers. But no nation is built on the actions of its founding fathers. Every nation is built on the ideals of the founding fathers. What were they pointing to? Where they, were they trying to go? That's where we're trying to get to. They are human, so they make mistakes. But we don't look at what they did. We look at what they were aspiring to. And those are the ideals by which we hold our nation, our government, our people wow. accountable. You leave me absolutely breathless with the sheer brilliance of your philosophy. I want to thank you very much indeed. D.K. Chukwumerije is a lawyer, writer, and performance poet. Thank you ever so much. Thank you.